Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Uyo Yen Wong Fai. I'm with the Transnational Threats and International Crime Program based in Pretoria. Thank you for joining us. At least 2,295 teachers have been killed and 1,400 schools destro destroyed by the terror organization known as Boko Haram since the group started perpetrating violent attacks in 2009. Since 2013, more than 1,000 children have been abducted. The Chibok girls' abduction in Borno State four years ago, where 219 girls were taken, and the February 2018 attack in Dapchi Yobe State, where 105 girls were abducted, are some of the more notable and audacious attacks. But boys have not been spared either, and have either been killed or abducted in attacks against schools. One of these instances was the killing of 49 boys in 2014 in a federal government college in Yobe State. But keeping girls specifically out of school remains a key part of Boko Haram's violent campaign in Nigeria. And as a result of this campaign, many boarding schools in Boko Haram affected regions have closed and parents are reluctant to send their girls to school. But why is educating girls vital in the fight against Boko Haram? And how can girls continue to attend school in areas where Boko Haram remains a threat? I will be talking to these issues today. Firstly, it's important to understand why keeping girls out of school is part of Boko Haram's campaign. Keeping girls out of school is a part of a three-pronged strategy of continuing Boko Haram's terror campaign while destroying Western-style education in Nigeria, as well as limiting the status of girls and women in society. In carrying out persistent attacks on schoolgirls, Boko Haram inevitably continues its terror campaign, causing fear and disruption. The aim of this is to firstly illustrate its continued ability to strike and its ability to embarrass the Nigerian government, especially considering the government's claims to have defeated Boko Haram. The attacks on, on schools, teachers, and students have been to deter Western-style education. Boko Haram, which is the name given to the group by local residents, is after all loosely translated as Western education is forbidden. According to Boko Haram, corruption among Muslims in Nigeria is a product of Western education and Western values, which has perverted society. Western education is therefore the enemy and a source of Nigerian societal ills. The third main purpose of the attacks is, therefore, is also to relegate girls and women to a position that is subordinate to their male counterparts. In 2014, when Boko Haram abduct, attacked Buniyadi College in Yobe State, they allegedly did not kill the girls as they had to the 49 boys there. Instead, they instructed them to leave the premises, to forget about going to school, and to get married. We see that Boko Haram gave similar instructions to the schoolgirls in Dabchi. They were warned that they would be re-abducted if they ever returned to school. As part of efforts to oppress girls, Boko Haram has also raped several abducted schoolgirls, used them as slaves, and forced them to marry the group's members and have children with them. Now, having said this, what is the danger of Boko Haram's campaign against girls' education? The danger is that girls' education in the northeastern part of Nigeria has already been under threat. Poverty and low perceptions on the value of education have encouraged the phenomenon of marrying off young girls and getting a bride price or dowry for for girls. As a result, the ratio of girls to boys in schools in the northern part of the country is low. Due to the Boko Haram crisis, however, 
more than half of the schools in Borno State, which is the epicenter of the crisis, have remained closed. Schools that have been attacked in other parts of the Northeast have also faced lengthy school closures. Some have been closed for four years. Added to this is the fact that after four years of the Chibok abduction, these girls, some of the girls, 112 girls to be exact, are still missing. Meanwhile, one of the 105 girls taken in Dapchi remains with Boko Haram. This has caused obvious disruptions in these girls' education. The attacks have also created trauma and the feeling of fear. One pupil who escaped the kidnapping in Dapchi said, the number of girls that go to school in this region is not much. Parents will be more unwilling to allow their daughters to go to school. They will be afraid Boko Haram will kidnap them. The effect of Boko Haram's attacks are compounded by the lack of confidence in the Nigerian government's ability to prevent future attacks against schools. The concern from Nigerians is that the government has also neither acted quickly enough nor appropriately in freeing all the schoolgirls or containing the aftermath of abductions. And although initiatives from the Nigerian government, from local NGOs, and from international organizations have collectively reduced the severity of the crisis on girls' education by ensuring that some girls continue their education in spite of the crisis, their initiatives are insufficient to properly address the magnitude of the problem. But girls' education is vital in the fight against Boko Haram. Why is this so? According to a popular Ghanaian proverb, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. But if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Parallels can be drawn from this saying to the situation of girls' education in Nigeria. It has been proven that educating a girl benefits girls themselves, their families, communities, and the nation more broadly. Educating girls limits child marriages, child pregnancy, as well as child pregnancies. It increases the likelihood of them having children that survive beyond the age of five years. It reduces the number of children a woman has in her lifetime and ensures that all her children are themselves educated. This is particularly important in northern Nigeria, where fertility rates are high and where women living in poverty can have on average seven children in rapid succession. Education therefore helps eradicate poverty. For example, providing education to girls in northeast Nigeria in the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics improves the chances of them being able to find jobs or create their own employment opportunities as they become young women. This in turn will strengthen the economy for future generations. It is therefore a smart and sustainable investment that will yield returns in the future. Now given that Boko Haram is, has exploited illiteracy, poverty, unemployment in fueling recruitment, and that a large portion of Boko Haram militants are uneducated and unemployed, educating the girl child is a tool for creating resilience against push and pull factors that produce recruitment. Finally, education helps nurture critical thinking and allows communities become better agents of their own change. Now, in conclusion, how can girls continue to attend school where Boko Haram remains a threat? Like ending the Boko Haram crisis, reversing the negative impact years of violence has had on education and ensuring girls continue to have their education is not going to be quick or easy. However, 
certain issues need to be taken into consideration. Firstly, there is need to urgently recover the missing schoolgirls and to offer them the necessary medical and psychosocial support necessary for them to thrive in school. Secondly, more security personnel are needed to protect schools in North East Nigeria from further attacks. Thirdly, the Safe Schools Initiative, which was started in the aftermath of, of the Chibok abductions, but discontinued two years ago, needs to be reinstated. This initiative is important because among other issues, it entails transferring students in affected areas to other states and supporting education in IDP camps. The next thing is traditional leaders should continue to advocate girls' education. The Emir of Kano State has been a prominent advocate of girls' education. And finally, elites and prominent businesses in Nigeria should partner with government in providing resources to improve the quality of education in the Northeast once schools have been reopened. Ladies and gentlemen, while there is no silver bullet to solving the challenges Boko Haram poses to girls' education, these steps acknowledge the symbiotic relationship between Boko Haram and education. They acknowledge that although Boko Haram attacks girls' education, girls' education could be the key to addressing the challenge of Boko Haram. For more information, feel free to read my article entitled An Attack on Nigeria's Schoolgirls is an Attack on Education. Thank you for your attention.